Maduro Clean Technologies is a company developing a revolutionary recycling technology called hydrochemolysis, which they've already taken action to protect through seven patents. It claims to have a variety of benefits over the competing processes. It can not only recycle plastic, but it can also recycle a variety of carbon-related products, like bitumen, which is asphalt, upcycling of renewable fuels, uh, potentially recycling tires, and more. This puts the company's total addressable markets in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Maduro's process is significantly less energy intensive. The usage of water and chemical catalysts instead of higher levels of heat reduces the need for extensive pre-processing of waste feedstock as well. Many other processes need extremely clean and pure feedstock. Maduro can also use a more diversified stream of waste because they can process several different types of plastic. Most existing technologies can only recycle one, and the technology is designed to be modular and easily scalable to reduce costs. The company has proven these benefits in batch testing within their labs, but also in their first continuous flow reactor, known as their R2 pilot unit, which recycles several kilograms of plastic waste per hour. They also have one up and running for bitumen as well. Now the main question on everyone's mind is, does the technology work at scale? This is the primary question that any new technology needs to answer. And that's also why the company only sits at a 70 million market cap right now. If it was truly proven and generating significant revenues, then the stock price would be far higher. But that's the opportunity that early investors can take advantage of. I've made the point in previous videos that the company already deserves a higher market cap, even without fully proving itself, but that's besides the point. Duro's been consistently de-risking itself and validating its technology. Another press release that the company put out yesterday contributes to that narrative. We'll go over what that press release means later in the video. But before we do that, I'd like to highlight all the ways that Aduro's proven their technology so far. Many people are fairly skeptical of the claims Aduro's making here. They're essentially saying their recycling process is better than all their competitors in nearly every single way. So what barometers can we look at to see if this has any credibility or not, considering it hasn't been scaled to a commercial size yet? Well, the first marker we can look into, and at least proving that technology has some merit, is the third-party validation that Aduro received from a professor of chemical and biochemical engineering at Western University in Ontario. Dr. Paul Charpentier oversaw testing of Aduro's bitumen process in an R2 reactor. That came before validation on the plastic side. Bitumen was sufficiently upgraded to lighter grades of crude, which is beneficial in reducing transportation costs for the heavier crudes that are commonly found in regions like Canada. This confirms that their process worked in a continuous system, so Aduro was increasingly confident that the technology would work for plastic as well. As mentioned earlier in the video, Aduro's built an R2 for testing plastic waste at this point, which is running and collecting data as we speak. The next major milestone that the company accomplished was getting into the Shell Game Changer program. Keep in mind, they managed to get into this program before their plastics R2 was even ready yet, which was a surprise to everyone paying attention, uh, yet the market barely cared. A common trend with this stock. As a part of this program, Shell is helping Aduro commercialize their technology, along with providing non-dilutive funding and technical expertise. There are six phases to the program, typically consisting of 12 months, so two months a phase. In December 2023, two months ago from when I'm recording this, Aduro had completed stage four and we're moving on to stage five. So it was a bit delayed at this point, at least from the timeline they gave here, but it seems like we can expect results in the next few months if Shell allows Adora to give them out, because Shell's been pretty tight-lipped about it. So that's another point of confirmation that Adora's technology shows some promise, and Shell is quite literally helping them make it a reality. Next, we know that including Shell, Adora has five paying customer engagements so far, companies that are testing recycling feedstock with Adora's process. Four of them are multi-billion dollar companies in the oil, plastics, and petrochemical industries, but the only disclosed partner so far is Shell. The rest of them have decided to keep things confidential. One of those companies actually decided to increase their level of funding to the initial testing phase by 450%. That petrochemical company wants to test a wider range of waste feedstock with higher levels of contamination to truly test the capabilities of a Duro system. You only increase funding like that, you know, even if it isn't a huge amount of money, if you're getting good initial results. So all this is another positive data point for a Duro technology working. Something else that a Duro's management team mentioned in their year-end investor call was that they not only have five active paying customer engagement programs, but they also have another 20 customer engagement dossiers. So another 20 companies on top of those five have signaled their interest in learning more about the technology. We can clearly see that there's at least a significant level of interest in what they have to offer. So another positive data point there. The one that really sticks for me and gets me excited is what's happened with Aduro and Brightlands Camelot. Brightlands is a large technological research institute in the Netherlands, 
and one of their focus areas is on presenting and testing technologies that will contribute to creating a circular economy, the creation of reusable materials, and recycling existing materials. The team at Brightland studied Adrios technology for 12 months, and they were impressed enough to let them in. This is a campus with more than 50 other startup technology companies. Well, the name of the Director of Business Development at the time in this press release might be familiar, Eric Appleman. Eric was also the Chief Technology Officer at Brightlands for six years. This is a guy with over a 30-year career in the petrochemical industry, working for companies like Unilever and Perstorp. He's seen what is offered in the landscape of recycling technology, and he was so convinced by Duro's results that he decided to join them as their Chief Revenue Officer. He could have chosen any of those technologies, but he chose Aduro. That is a significant vote of confidence. And he chose to do so when he was still looking at results from Maduro's batch processing. This wasn't even when they had built a continuous flow R2 reactor for plastics yet. That was how sure he was that the technology worked based on the data. Eric Appleman was in an interview with Marius Konieshny yesterday, and I recommend that you watch that interview after finishing this video because it was great. But here are some of the key points he made that contribute to my point here. He continued to reiterate that Aduro has the best technology that he's seen out of anything he tested during his tenure in the industry and while at Brightlands. Mariusz asked him if he'd seen anything like Aduro, and he confidently said no. Another talking point was that most competitors need three factories to deal with post-processing treatment of their product. So one factory for actually breaking down the plastic waste, another for after-treatment of the product, and a third factory for creating that hydrogen that they need to do the after-treatment. So competitors need three plants, but Aduro doesn't need three. They only need one. Their process doesn't need that costly post-processing. So this is a huge deal for the economics of plastic recycling, among the other benefits of the technology that we mentioned at the start of the video. As far as the question of scaling to larger size plants, going from R2 to R3, which is actually recycling several tons of plastic waste per day or more, Eric does not see why the technology would not be able to scale. He doesn't sound worried about it in the slightest in this interview. So this is a new guy that recently joined the company, you know, not a founder or anyone starting out with a vested interest, and he doesn't sound worried about it. The last major point Eric was making was about the yield of the process. How much product do they get out at the end after the recycling is all said and done? You know, this is where we get into the latest press release Aduro put out yesterday. In this press release, Aduro talked about how they've conducted over 240 test runs of a variety of plastic feedstocks in their R2 reactor, the longest one being a day and a half. Here's what their findings were. Approximately 95% of the end product was valuable carbons that can be used in a variety of chemicals or plastics. So the technology has a yield of 95%. The other 5% was char, carbon dioxide, or methane that is considered waste. Additionally, all the end product was saturated, avoiding the costly hydrogenation process that other competitors need to do. As Eric was talking about when competitors need three factories, Oladuro only needs one. This is a higher yield than competing technologies that tend to get yields more in the 70 to 80% range. Yet again, another big deal when trying to determine the economics of a project. Consider this press release a teaser of the results they've seen, since they discuss creating a more comprehensive report on their results that will be coming out in the near future. So I would expect to see that in the next few months, you know, maybe after Shell Game Changers being finalized. So we have a variety of data points that Aduro has given us over the last one to two years to further prove that the technology works, and management doesn't seem worried about trying to scale it. Of course, the company isn't truly de-risked until they've actually built a commercial plant, but there's plenty of data there for you to determine if you think the underlying technology itself shows promise. As always, your investing decisions are your own to make, but I thoroughly believe this company has a shot at transforming the recycling space which deserves a valuation in the billions if proven to be true, you know, not 70 million. So this is my second largest holding in my portfolio. Given how unknown Aduro has been in the public markets, the company's been raising their marketing efforts, especially over the last few months. They've brought in a variety of firms to try to help with PR. This includes Outside the Box Capital, Arrowhead, Crystal Research Associates, and Investor Cubed. I really don't know how effective any of this is, you know, the stock price has performed decently well, so maybe it does have some impact, but I'm not sure. I'm just used to microcaps doing this type of paid marketing, so I don't really care either way, honestly. They've also been upping their presence at various industry conferences and events with investors, so we can see they're trying to get the word out about the company at this point. It doesn't help that Aduro trades on the OTC and the Canadian Stock Exchange. You know, that makes things more challenging, especially when trying to get the interest of any possible institutional investors. But we'll get there eventually, you know, slowly but surely. Every year, Aduro highlights several key milestones they want to achieve, and for 2024, they have three key objectives. One, 
They're working on developing their plans for an R3 unit, recycling multiple tons of plastic waste per day, which they estimate will be built sometime in the first half of 2025. This will be their first commercial unit. Second, they want to bring in more customers and convert their existing customers in their testing program to what they call collaborators, which involves more thorough testing, among other potential benefits for Duro, at which point these programs could be bringing in millions of dollars in revenue, so that would minimize potential dilution and further integrate those large companies. Lastly, Arduro wants to expand their patent portfolio with at least two to four more patents in 2024. So these are the potential catalysts we can look out for on the horizon. If you're just starting to learn about Arduro, I cover the company regularly on this YouTube channel, and I would recommend checking out my playlist on all my videos on the company. I'll link to that playlist in the description, and thanks for watching.